Hi, everybody, and welcome back. I hope everybody's doing well. Have the opportunity to observe the nonverbal cues of your friends and family over the last few days, and hopefully we're all staying safe. I want to jump right back into it as we wrap up our nonverbal communication unit. I wanted to circle back one more time to touch on a few of the topics within nonverbal communication that I feel like we needed to uh, uh, hit one more time before we moved on. So let's just jump right into it, shall we? I'm going to share my screen real quick and we'll get into it. Let's hang on real quick. There we go. And let's jump in. All right. So again, we've talked about our nonverbal both in a face-to-face -face situation, in group situations, and in the virtual world. And I think we've had a lot of fun during it. I hope you've enjoyed it. But I do want to touch on one specific part of the nonverbal family that I really enjoy, but it's also one that trips people up a little bit because it's not your typical nonverbal communication. So let's get into that. So our learning target today and our quick lesson is to understand the impact of and how to use paralinguistics. I know for those of you who uh, have been with me, you have heard this term before because we've been covering it, but it is a tricky one. So I wanted to dive deeper into it a little bit more today. As a reminder, paralinguistics is a kind of nonverbal communication based on the qualities of your voice and the way you vocalize. So in other words, paralinguistics is a type of nonverbal communication that is actually verbal. So in other words, it's not what she did, it's the way she said it, or not necessarily the way she said it, it's the way she said it. Does that make sense? Anyway, we'll get a little bit more into that now here real quick. So let's review some of the nonverbal communication pieces that we've already talked about. We've talked about appearance. We've talked about gestures and facial expressions. We've talked about postures and eye contact. And there's that last one, paralinguistics. And that's the tone of the voice, the pitch of the voice, loudness, and the different things you can do with your voice. Down there at the bottom, uh, you've, you can grab this, of course, off your dashboard anytime, but I've also added a link there to a verbal, a nonverbal video off YouTube from the TV show Friends. It sort of, uh, it, it splices together different scenes from the show Friends that shows you different types of nonverbal communication they use. Uh, not just paralinguistics, but all sorts. And it's actually a lot of fun. There's actually a really funny uh, seen from Bridesmaids as well that uses a lot of paralinguistics. So if you search paralinguistics Bridesmaids, it's the scene in the airplane uh, in the movie Bridesmaids. It's actually very funny and it uses a ton of paralinguistics as nonverbal communication. So it's worth checking out. So both of those uh, are worth looking at. So what I want to focus on here is paralinguistics and why it's one of my favorite types of nonverbal communication. Okay, what is paralinguistics specifically? Paralinguistics are the features of the nonverbal vocal cues that give urgency to your voice or gives that certain specific um, message that you want to convey in your voice. Uh, in a nonverbal way. Now, as a uh, aspiring and part-time voice actor and public speaker, I love the second one where it says, your voice is your trademark. Your voice and how you use it is vintage you and no one else can do it just like you can. So it's a tool to communicate. It's also a tool to persuade, as you know, but it's also a tool to use nonverbally uh, and as well, and we'll talk about that here as we keep going forward. And again, it's the part of yourself that adds the human touch to your words. Unlike writing where it's a little bit different because the words are all statically on the page, um, the paralinguistics can add that little human touch to anything you say in both positive, negative. It can tell, tell the story of your, your mood, how you feel, all within the tone, the pitch, the rate of, of how you speak. 
And again, the paralingu paralinguistics gives life to your delivery. So uh, for instance, as you can see here, uh, the volume, the rate, and the rate is of course how fast or slow you speak. Uh, the pitch, either the high or low pitch, how well you articulate, how well you pronunciate, and then how you pause. And that's something I know you see me doing quite a bit. It's that really important thing that you do before you say something really important is you do that pause and you stop for a minute and everyone just says, oh, what's next, hopefully. And then you say it. So I use pauses a lot. It's sort of my technique that I enjoy. Um, I don't use my voice up and down too often. I'm a pretty even keel kind of guy but I do love to be able to pause to make sure I get my point across, okay? So what I'm gonna do here in the short period of time that we have, in case uh, there are any questions. Now, of course, you can send me a note on the chat board if you have any questions about those things. Um, and so let me back up real quick and, and we can talk about that more if there are any more questions. The other thing I know a lot of th that comes up is what about those things that you can control, but maybe you're a little bit out of control, like laughter. What is laughter? Is laughter not verbal? Yes. Laughter is a fantastic paralinguistic device. It can uh, light up a room, laughter can. It can make you feel very uncomfortable. Um, it can convey a lot of messages by using laughter. Also things like clearing your throat when you say <clears throat> things of that nature, either to make a point or to maybe draw attention to yourself. Definitely a nonverbal paralinguistic device. Uh, I also had a friend in college who could belch on command I don't, I, I don't know, have that skill, but he learned it in college at Syracuse and he would just belch for no reason anytime just to get attention or to even make a point. Um, so that's a paralinguistic device as well as is yawning, uh, yawning very much so, where you can definitely, if you're like me, you see someone else yawn and I start yawning even though I'm not tired. Or if I think about yawning, I just start yawning like I kind of right did right there. So paralinguistics are again, a very powerful tool. So I'm gonna give you some examples of that. And then I want you to, I'm gonna want you to do the same because I know you've been uh, looking at the nonverbal cues at home from your friends and family because I've asked you to do that and report back to me on that. And so you've done a great job of seeing those different nonverbal cues but the paralinguistic cues are the ones that I really want you to look at more closely because those are some really powerful ones. So what I'm going to do here is say the phrase, I'm fine, five different ways and see if you think I'm able to match the description. So let's start. I'm fine. So did that sound depressed to you? Sound like I was a little depressed? I'm fine. So with a little facial expression and the way I said that in a way, it makes it sound like maybe I'm depressed because normally the response might be what? Are you okay? I'm fine. I'm fine. You said that before, I'm sure you have. Are you frustrated at a situation? I'm fine. Feeling angry right now. I'm feeling a little angry right now, but it'll be okay. Hmm. I'm fine. I'm fine. Kind of sarcastic. Maybe you're poking fun at somebody, or you're mimicking somebody. I'm fine. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? Feeling happy? A little bit better? Good to end that way? So you, how you use your voice, either how loud it is, the tone, like maybe a higher pitch tone versus a lower tone, can really convey how you're feeling 
by using paralinguistics. And this is nonverbal communication, okay, nonverbal. So I want you to really pay attention to some of those conversations you have with other people and really get into how they're feeling based on the paralinguistic tools that they're using. So here's what I want from you. In the few minutes we have left, I want you to either do an audio recording, do it on your phone, or uh, you can do it on video if you like, and just post it to uh, your portfolio or post it to your account and for me so I can see. Because I want to see if you if you sort of following what I'm saying here. If you're able to use your voice in a way where you can be persuasive and using paralinguistics. So I want you to use the word really five different ways. I gave you I'm fine different ways, but I want you to say really five different ways. So I want you to say it and then tell me what you think it was. So um, like I said, I'm fine. I was angry. Did that sound angry? I think it sounded angry. I hope it sounded angry. I'm not very angry very often. So that's what I want you to do. Give me the word really five different ways and then tell me each of the ways that you were trying to convey by what adjective it would be. Okay, if there are any questions about that, again, ping me real quick and, and I'll be able to get back to you, but just upload that audio or video file to your account. I'll be able to see it. That's our assessment. For, for the end of this unit. Again, this is wrapping up nonverbal communication. It's been a lot of fun. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. Um, it's certainly one of my favorite ways to communicate is using those nonverbal messages. And we'll be able to get into more ways. We'll be talking about interviewing very soon and how that nonverbal communication can really be key in interviewing. So stay tuned for that. Otherwise, that is all I had on this unit in this little bit of time that I had. So back to me. Again, I hope everyone's doing great, uh, staying safe, and I look forward to uh, our next get together. So take care.